Hello, everyone. Welcome to the installation ceremony of Bonnie Sweener as the inaugural Endowed Professor of Disability, Health, and Justice. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you today and to celebrate this momentous occasion. My name is Natalie Bush, and I'm the chair of the Nursing Advisory Board at Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. We extend a warm welcome to our special guests, including President Daniels, Lisa Meeks, Bonnie's husband Tyler, and her children, and other family and friends and honored guests. We're also delighted to have so many friends that are able to join us via live stream. I'd like to begin our ceremony today with an acknowledgement of the land. The Johns Hopkins School of Nursing acknowledges we reside on unceded lands of the Piscataway peoples, the indigenous people who are traditional owners of the Chesapeake Bay region. We acknowledge all indigenous people, the traditional owners of the lands and waters of the United States of America. It's an exciting day here at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. The installation of an endowed chair signifies a deep and lasting commitment to the school's mission, and in this case, its mission to drive disability, health, justice, and equity. Dr. Sweener is a remarkable advocate for the disability community and the perfect person to hold this inaugural chair. In the relatively short time that she has been uh, at the School of Nursing, Dr. Sweener has already helped to implement significant changes from making disability equity a priority in the school environment to advocating for accessibility, inclusion of disability in the curriculum, and so much more. We are so happy to celebrate her and her achievements today, and we know that this is just the beginning. It's my pleasure now to turn it over to Johns Hopkins School of Nursing Dean Sarah Zanton for the formal presentation of the endowed chair to the university. Thank you so much, Natalie. And thank you again to everyone for being here. I just love seeing all this family and friends together, especially after we were gone for so long during COVID. And thank you and welcome to everyone on Zoom. I'm, I'm assuming we are know that they can see and hear. Okay, great. So Dr. Bonnie Lynn Sweener has an unrelenting drive to ensure that all people, including people with disabilities, are able to thrive. Her installation as an endowed chair formally acknowledges the impact her career has already made and what we expect to come as faculty, as researcher, as advocate, and as a leader. I know she's a great mom too, but that's not what we're celebrating tonight. When Bonnie first reached out about a home at the School of Nursing for her work and center, I immediately understood the impact she would have on our school and on our world if she got the support that she and her center need. I could also see how her work would further our mission. It fits so well, because like the nursing perspective, Dr. Sweener takes an integrative approach to her work and focuses on the whole person, their family, their community, and how the context of that person's life impacts their health and well-being. Today, as you know, more than 27% of American adults have a disability. And yet, people with disabilities face many barriers to health, equity, and inclusion. Dr. Sweener herself knows this all too well, including with forms that we have on our own website that she is helping us to break through to make better. Um, she often shares how she's motivated by her own experience with low vision. She has experienced the barriers so prevalent in our society for those with disabilities and wants to remove them for everyone. That's why the Johns Hopkins Disability Health Research Center, where Dr. Sweener is founder and director, strives to shift the paradigm of living with a disability to thriving with a disability. The center officially moved to the School of Nursing in 2022 and is one of the very few centers across the university that uses data, policy, and education to advance disability, equity, and justice. In fact, I would say it's the only one. We're just being polite so that we don't <laughs> leave someone out. This resonates particularly well here at the School of Nursing because social justice is at the core of all that we do. 
hold on with the embarrassment just a little bit longer. People are going to be saying nice things about you all evening. <laughs> so. Dr. Sweener and her center are nationally and internationally known for the data they gather on disability. With this information, she has served on the U.S. International Trade Commission's advisory and policy committees and currently serves on the CDC Health Equity Working Group. Last summer, she organized and led a national workshop to advocate for inclusion of people with disabilities in STEM fields. And every time I turn around, she's advising Congress, the White House, the CDC, the NIH, the National Science Foundation, NASA, AHRQ, the U.S. Access Board, offices, other offices in AHHS, Department of Justice, offices in Congress, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, the National Governors, and, uh, Governors Association, and other organizations that govern all of our lives. <laughs> providing her expertise to guide their approach to their missions. One of her most recent victories, which you may have heard about, was organizing thousands of people to weigh in to the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Becerra, to include people with disabilities as a health disparities population and to ensure their inclusion in NIH-supported research. And she got a shout out from President Biden for that. So we're all feeling kind of famous just from being near Bonnie. <laughs> Not to mention her work in, included her podcast that Forbes has recognized as a top podcast on disability. Through this endowed chair, Dr. Sweener and the Disability Health Research Center will have significant impact on our ability to build activism and visibility in the disability community. And when I say our, I'm not taking credit, I'm saying our in the larger sense. She will increase access for all people with disabilities, develop data as it relates to disability, health, and inequities, and launch initiatives starting here in Baltimore to help increase access. Locally, she's partnering with the Maryland Department of Disabilities and a Maryland-based company, Clear Impact, to leverage big data and use a results-based accountability framework to advance health equity for people with disabilities. Through this partnership, Dr. Sweener is building the Disability Equity Index and the Disability Equity Dashboard using Maryland data, two technologies developed to offer a more inclusive approach to engaging people with disabilities in the workforce. Dr. Bonnie Sweener and the Johns Hopkins Disability Health Research Center are committed to training the next generation as well. She's training the next generation of disability equity researchers and including researchers with disabilities. And so finally, thank you to the Maryland Innovation Initiative Fund Authority, the estates of Ms. Charlotte Lochner and Mr. Ralph S. O'Connor, and Antoinette Del Ruel and Joshua L. Steiner for establishing the Endowed Professorship of Disability Health and Justice. It aims to push scientific discovery and innovation and increase access and equity for all people with disabilities. And now, please welcome President Ron Daniels to offer his remarks. Uh, thank you, Sarah, and good afternoon to everyone here. Um, let me uh, just tell you how delighted I am to be able to join you all uh, to honor Dr. Bonnie Lynn Sweener as the inaugural Endowed Professor of Disability Health and Justice. This is a great moment in the life of the institution, and I'm really uh, delighted to be able to be here to accept the professorship on behalf of the university. Um, let me also take this opportunity just to say hello to the Sooner clan. It's great, Tyler, to have you here, and Amelia and Owen. I've told them beforehand, at some point, they've got great crayons and markers and some good paper, and they're doing some sketching. Which side do you want? Do you like my left side, my right side? <laughs> um, but at some point, I may reach over and grab some of that and do some of my own doodling, so um, you'll understand if, uh, if I indulge that temptation. I also want to take a moment to welcome Holden Thorpe. Uh, who is a distinguished academic leader. Holden and I go back many years. We were presidents at the American Association of Universities together. Um, he's had a number of different academic roles. Uh, he is now editor-in-chief at Science Journals. I can say really nice things about him because he will understand as a legal academic, I have no expectation I'm ever gonna get published in his journals, <laughs> but so it's all really heartfelt. But on so many different issues, Holden, yeah, <laughs> it may come to that, we'll see. But uh, Holden, on so many different issues, not just in terms of thinking about uh, the journals and the role that you play um, 
in playing in, in being guardian for the great uh, scientific enterprise and ensuring the whole process of peer review and the integrity of scientific research is uh, well protected, but on a host of different issues around the character of the academy and of core uh, challenges to the nature of the academy. You've been a courageous and a really visionary spokesperson for our great cause in higher education. So. I didn't know you were going to be here today, but I'm thrilled that you are, and welcome, welcome, welcome. So, delighted you're here. Uh, and those of you who do hope to get um, published, <laughs> you should give them a round of applause. So. <laughs> so, there's a lot to celebrate, and not the least of which because it's also Bonnie's birthday today. <laughs> Aww. So I'm not going to sing happy birthday to you, given my uh, challenges with tone and so on. But um, I am going to accept this professorship on behalf of the university. It's, uh, it's really wonderful uh, to have this professorship and to have you as the inaugural recipient. So congratulations. Earlier this year, um, our world lost a titan in the fight for disability rights, uh, Judy Heumann. Uh, as many in this room know so well, uh, Human was a quadriplegic who had survived the 1949 uh, polio epidemic. Over the course of her long career, she paved the way for Americans with Disabilities Act and served multiple presidential administrations. But long before she led a revolution, truly a revolution in disability rights in this country, Judy was a young college graduate with dreams of becoming a teacher. She needed a license, but the New York City Board of Education was reluctant to provide her with one. They claimed that her wheelchair presented a hazard within the classroom. And then, if that were not demoralizing enough, the board subjected her to a series of discriminatory examinations in order to ostensibly validate her capabilities as an educator. But they were a naked barrier to entry into her field. Judy's response to this brazen set of injustices was to sue, um, and that led her to becoming the first ever teacher in New York City to use a wheelchair, and then to a storied career as one of the most impactful activists of the century. We were proud, in fact, to welcome her to the Homewood campus uh, back in 2020 uh, when uh, she uh, spoke here. She also understood from her youth onward that the obstacles she faced were not just because of her disability, but because she inhabited a world that refused to give proper accommodation to her and to her incredible human potential. As she once said, disability only becomes a tragedy when society fails to provide the things we need to live our lives, from equitable job opportunities to accessible buildings to legal rights. Today, we have the opportunity to celebrate another path-breaking advocate for disability rights and reform, as well as, you've already heard, a brilliant thinker and researcher who is bridging scholarship and practice, and that, of course, is Bonnie. I know Bonnie's path crossed humans in her ongoing work to reduce disability inequities, and like humans, she too seized upon her personal experience with a disability, in this case, visual impairment, as an opportunity to make meaningful, durable, important change. The list of Bonnie's accomplishments, as you've already heard, is truly staggering. A nationally renowned investigator and the founding director of our Disability Health Research Center, Bonnie is every day advancing disability equity and justice to drive evidence-based, data-driven policies and solutions. Her work is, support, is supporting accessible public transit, revealing the effects of visual impairment and the mobility of older adults, increasing access to COVID vaccines, and creating pathways for people with disabilities in fields across STEM, healthcare, and medicine. And that doesn't even count for what Bonnie has done more generally on the university stage that has really enhanced the quality of life at our institution. She's been instrumental in helping us to find new ways to serve, sustain and empower all those with disabilities across our campuses. As a trusted member of the task force behind our JHU Roadmap on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Bonnie helped call for the expansion of a more robust composition data to account for disability, and we broke uh, ground in developing that report and, in, and having it track disability in a way that uh, had not been done before at Hopkins and has done at a few other institutions in our peer group, in our peer group. 
She has supported efforts to recruit and retain greater numbers of disabled faculty, and she has helped advocate for the visibility and support for disability affinity groups across Hopkins. So Bonnie, we're just so grateful for all that you've done at Hopkins and beyond to remove the invisible burdens placed on far too many disabled people. You are truly in the words of Judy Human, ensuring that our society does not fail to provide these, those with disabilities with what they need, but is instead building the requisite foundations and resources to allow all people to lead lives of dignity, opportunity, safety, and equality. And of course, as Sarah said a few moments ago, we're just so grateful to all the donors who rallied around, saw the opportunity for this professorship, and, uh, and heeded our call as we asked you to contribute to it. Thank you very, very much. It's often easiest when it's just a single donor who writes a single check. In this case, it actually it took a village and, um, and we're just so appreciative that people came together and again, motivated by the great cause and the opportunity we have before us. So with that, it is my great pleasure and privilege to be able to welcome our inaugural recipient of this chair to the podium. Bonnie Sweener. Y'all make me sound so good. <laughs> I, I didn't know you were going to talk about Judy Ron, but our present Daniel. Uh, but I actually had talked to Judy just a few weeks before she had passed, and uh, she <laughs> asked me if. I thought I had made any difference at this university, and I told her I, I did not know. <laughs> As she told me, keep trying. So hopefully, hopefully we're, we're getting somewhere, and I think we are, so thank you. Um, well, thank you all for being here today, and a special thanks to President Daniels, without whom we would not be here. Um, much gratitude to all the donors that have made this possible. Um, and I want to give special thanks to those that have organized this event and worked with me to promote the accessibility of today, um, including our interpreter and our captioners online. And thanks to everyone that's taking the time to be here and, and to join us. I really appreciate it. I know there's a lot of harrowing things going on around the world right now, and I know how hard you all are working on very important issues. So I'm really grateful that you're taking the time to, to be here. To me, this is a very important moment, not really because I'm here, but because everyone is here, that you all are here, and that we're here as an institution and as a community and as a country, because just a few years ago, I would have never thought that we'd be having these kinds of conversations around disability equity and inclusion and accessibility like we are today. And that's because there's just so many barriers, as President Daniels indicated, for people with disabilities across all aspects of life barriers to just doing our jobs, barriers to being valued, and barriers for people to understand what those barriers are. And those barriers altogether are constant reminders that our presence, the presence of people with disabilities is still radical, just showing up. We're not expected to be in places like this and so many other places, and that really is something that we have to change. And you know, titles of being a first or an only are important, but they always have made me feel a little lonely, to be honest, and a reminder that we still have so far to go. But I know that I'm actually not alone, because I think everybody has moments or feelings that they don't belong that they are excluded in some way for who they are, what they believe in, where they're from, where you're at in life. And I think because of that experience, we can all recognize that trying to change that, not just for yourself, but for the community, takes a lot of hard and emotional effort. Because you have to go through those personal feelings of pain of exclusion and make something constructive out of it. And that's a lot of effort. But I don't think, unfortunately, that's enough. I think we have to do all of that really hard work. And then we need to find time and energy to 
understand the pain and the barriers that people who are not like us at all experience and to learn about that in such a way that the work that we're doing, the actions we take, makes positive change for those people too. And to me, that's what disability justice is all about, right? And that's the aspiration of the work we're doing at the Disability Health Research Center. We believe that disability is something that unites us, that brings us together, because people with disabilities are all around the world in every part of uh, this country, in all countries, across all age groups. And in so many ways, disability is something that is part of all of our lives at some point. We also believe that data and research are critical to changing the way that people with disabilities are viewed and included in society. And those are ways that haven't been utilized enough. We believe that those types of changes are needed to tackle the world's toughest social and research problems and to make a more equitable world in general for everybody. And I know and I'm reminded all the time that this is a very big ask and thing we're trying to do. It feels like a lofty goal. And to some people, it's still very radical. But perhaps that's what it feels like when you're trying to do something a little bit different. So we keep pressing forward. We are in full recognition that we're not doing this alone, that it takes communities of communities to get this kind of work done, that we need to bring people together who don't often work together across fields of science and research and policy to try and do this work. And that's where all of you come in. There's a lot of people here uh, joining us in person and online from very different places. And that's what I think I'm the proudest of. But to me, today is celebrating you all, your work in this space, working together in ways maybe you haven't before. And I'm just really, really grateful for that. Um, I am immensely grateful for the support, and I promise I will do all I can to have the biggest impact for the most people. Um, but if you will bear with me, I have a few very specific thanks. I don't use notes, as many of you know, as I didn't just then, but I have to use notes for making sure I don't uh, forget anyone. So I do want to start by uh, adding a little more commentary to my thanks for President Daniels. So I, I just want to share a story that one of my first <laughs> interactions with President Daniels was um, sending him an email expressing why I, uh, I thought he was not doing something right, but um, as many, uh, <laughs> well, I was just going to say, I think if we had a show of hands of how many people have gotten those emails from me, it would be everybody. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. That's uh, and my husband too. And <laughs> Lisa knows. Anyway. Um, but, you know, at the time, it was about that disability wasn't part of the strategic plan of the university, right? This was the, the many, many years ago, it feels like. And I didn't think I'd get an answer, as I never did at that point. And that wasn't the case. He responded. And I remember exactly where I was when I got the email, because it was very unexpected. And the email said that he personally was going to make sure that that would change. And... That meant so much to me, um, and perhaps emboldened me to send more of those emails, so sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think really taught me a lot about, you know, speaking up and asking for what you think needs to change. And he absolutely did change that, and so much more, and I'm just so truly grateful. He's been generous with his time and his support and his advice over the years, and I know that we wouldn't be where we are today with the center without them. So thank you so much. And Dean Zanton, thank you for your tireless pursuit of equity and for giving us a great home. Your openness, you were the first to cheer on our successes and to push us forward. And we are all just so, so grateful. We are absolutely here today because of you. You made this happen. You started this process and I am so grateful. I have a number of colleagues here from some of my roots at the Wilmer Eye Institute, 
And I want to thank you all. Uh, Sheila West, who is out traveling the world. If you know Sheila, that's no surprise. Um, she was my mentor from the start and really pushed me. Uh, she saw in me what I didn't at the time see in myself and owe her uh, so much gratitude. Megan Collins is here. Megan has been a long friend, uh, my first friend at Hopkins as a faculty member on our first day and has been a great supporter the, since. Um, Jim Handa, Bert John, Pradeep Bramalu, Sharon Solomon, Jennifer Thorne, and so many more who believed in the work I was doing to try and shift from work and vision only to expand to disability. Your belief and support is incredible, and I'm so grateful for you to push me forward. Marilyn Albert was my advisor on my K Award, and I still will never understand why she gave me the time of day, I have to be honest. <laughs> Um, she's such a big deal. And um, she has really helped bend the arc of my career in, I think, a really positive direction. She's so generous with her time. Again, I will never understand why, but I am so grateful. I've been at Hopkins for over 15 years, so I've had a chance to make a lot of good friends and have a lot of great colleagues um, who've become collaborators and advisors, and so many of you are taking time to be here today, and I am so grateful. But I specifically want to call out Jennifer Deal and Nick Greed and Laura Samuel, who have really joined us in, in developing the center and been with us from the start. Thank you so much. I'm forever indebted to the staff of the center and the students who are unbelievably committed to this work. It's amazing. Um, particularly Varshini Vardaraj and Pratik Gajwani, who are originals, and uh, really the foundation of, of the work we're doing and getting us up and running. And thanks to Franz Castro and Caroline Sorelli, who are our current foundation in, in all of the work we're doing, keeping us afloat. I learned from our many trainees, and I am so grateful. We have trainees from all over the institution and from um, academic institutions across the country. Your dedication and interest and eagerness in learning about this type of work and research keeps me in the game, I must say. Um, there's so many of you to thank. I would break our interpreter, I think. Um, <laughs> so, but I do have to give a shout out to Sabrina Epstein, who has um, been an incredible trainee, uh, really shaped our work during COVID-19, and now is off doing amazing things at Disability Rights California. Um, I also have to give thanks, I promise, it's not gonna go too much longer, um, give thanks to so many staff, faculty, and students who have worked to shape and reimagine um, many efforts around disability equity, inclusion, and accessibility across the university. Um, Carrie Devlin, uh, Talak Renanthner, uh, Kathy Axe, um, Aaron Hukovich, thank you so much for, for really digging in and, and making really good change. And I have to give thanks to the many colleagues that I have the privilege and opportunity to work with um, from universities and academic institutions around the world that are doing amazing work and working with us in this process. Kara Ayers, Vivian Chung, Lisa Iazzoni, Jay Kennedy, Scott Landis, Megan Morris, Chris Moreland, Javier Robles, and my longtime colleagues in Canada, I've got to give you a special shout out, Natalie Martinello, Mahedio Sukai, and Walter Wittich. I know you're joining us virtually today. We also work very closely with the activist and advocacy communi community um, in, in the disability space, and we really view ourselves as a partner um, to that community. We've had the privilege to work with AAPD, Maria Town, uh, who's the CEO of AAPD, uh, Tawana Zamansky from Communication First, Jamie Seltzer from Me Action, the amazing Mary Lou Breslin and Sylvia Yee from Disability Rights and Education Defense Fund, Ryan Easterly at the With Foundation, Andy Imperato at Disability Rights California, Justice Shorter, and Congressman Tony Coelho. I need to also give gratitude to my colleagues in government, so we're working in in lots of places in policy, as uh, Dean Zanton indicated, and it was embarrassing to hear that list, I have to say. Um, <laughs> our colleagues in, in government are really making great change from the inside out, and I am so 
grateful for the opportunities to partner with them, uh, especially Anjali Forber Pratt, Adam Politis, Alison Cernich, Teresa Cruz, Marie Bernard, Andreas Galejos, and so many colleagues across Congress that I know are joining us today online, federal and state agencies, and folks in, in, inside the White House, and those that have left the White House, like Kim Nackstadt. Um, I have to give thanks as well to the government relations teams here at Hopkins who has put up with me and gave me lots of advice. <laughs> I email you every day. Um, uh, for the past few years, Chris Austin, Kristen Reek, and Maren Bowen. And I am very grateful to the professional organizations that have gotten those emails from me and risen to the occasion. Um, and some of you are represented here. AAMC, AAAS, Holden, <laughs> the heart of science. Um, your response to asks for making change really are so important, and I hope everyone can learn from what you're doing. Lisa Meeks, <laughs> who will be following after I uh, give my remarks, my colleague and collaborator and friend whose kindness knows no bounds. You've taught me so much about this work and about life. I would have certainly quit all of this if it wasn't for you so many times. Cheering me on, I'll always love you for giving it to me straight, telling me when I'm wrong with a perfect balance of support. Your work's impact is beyond measure, and I am so grateful for all the ways that you've included me. Thank you for being here, and thank you for always being there for me. And last, but certainly not least, I am grateful for my family, their unconditional love and support. <laughs> Amelia and Owen, you always keep me grounded. Um, you, your curiosity and kindness reminds me of what's important in life. I hope you never stop keeping me humble and reminding me that going to the White House is really not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> to my husband, Tyler. He's truly the better half of this team. Anyone who knows him knows that's true <laughs> in all regards. Thank you for your unwavering support for many years. Uh, and no matter what the day holds, you always make everything better. Thank you. And with that, thank you all. And thanks for bearing with me. All right, Dr. Lisa Meeks. I think my font is bigger than Bonnie's. I cannot figure out how that works. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, today, we are, we are gathered to... <laughs> I have a lot of notes. <laughs> Today we gather to celebrate a remarkable individual, truly, whose dedication, compassion, and contributions have left an indelible and accessible mark on the field of vision science, medicine, public health, and social justice. The dedication of this professorship is a testament to her outstanding achievements and the profound impact she has had on disability inclusion in not only the United States, but globally. You all know Bonnie as a fierce academic, as a policymaker, as a change agent, but there is a softer side to Bonnie. I know, bear with me. <laughs> While Bonnie is strong and steadfast in her work, she is I promise you, equally vulnerable, caring, supportive, and reflective. She is kind, she is very protective, she's giving, and she is supportive of her friends, her mentees, and her community. Somehow, she manages to be Wonder Woman and decidedly and beautifully human at the same time. 
As a student from a disadvantaged background with an acquired visual disability, this was not her prescribed nor her encouraged path. In many ways, her successes are against all odds. Due, her success though, is due in part to her ability to unlock and decode the unwritten curriculum of academia, to turn down the volume of ableism, and to forge ahead in a world that was not created for her. Dr. Bonnie Lynn Sweener is not just a name. She represents a new generation of scientists who are proudly embracing their disability identity, demanding disability access and justice in their work environments, and serving as a beacon of light for more people with disabilities who wish to join the academy. Dr. Bonnie Lynn Sweener represents the possibilities for disability access in STEM. Her work isn't dissimilar to that of a lighthouse keeper. Lighthouse keepers were founded in 1789 as part of Congress's Public Works Act. Women oversaw lighthouses as early as 1872, very uncommon during this period. A lighthouse keeper's day began before dawn and ended well past dusk, a schedule all too familiar for Dr. Sweener. Although a keeper was responsible for making repairs as well as other routine duties of the lighthouse, they also had to be prepared to respond to emergencies, including shipwrecks. The largest of the light keeper's duties was to keep the light operating regardless of the weather conditions and other foreboding factors. During the most severe storms, the lighthouse keeper worked 24 hours a day, staying vigilant until the storm was over. Not unlike a lighthouse keeper in the face of a storm, Dr. Sweener dons her protective gear. It may not consist of a yellow slicker and a bucket hat, but it's equally protective. Her data, her advocacy, and her community are what keep her safe. Our modern day shipwrecks <laughs> are too numerous to count, especially after the last few days, but include COVID, where disability communities' experiences were fraught with inequities, where the value of their lives were questioned or deprioritized, and where heightened barriers to medical care were, and I dare say continue, to be the norm. During this shipwreck, Dr. Sweener sounded the alarm for all, casting her beacon of light on the medical establishment and calling in health policy leaders to address this wholly unacceptable status quo. By bringing these issues to the forefront, she elevated the conversation and spurred action. A lighthouse is used in many ways, as needed for a certain occasion, including to warn mariners of dangerous shallows and perilous rocky coasts. Bonnie is an expert lighthouse keeper in this regard. She is clearly illuminating the issues that face us all. This actually may be one of her greatest gifts. She shows us the storms that are still brewing out in sea and the hazards that are so close to our own shores. In doing so, she unveils the rampant ableism that perpetuates healthcare disparities and upholds inequities. Her light ensures that we too witness these truths and that we reckon with our responsibility to address them. By spotlighting the dangers, a lighthouse also helps guide vessels safely into and out of the harbor. In, the, in this way, <laughs> sorry.
Dr. Sweener's light not only shines in the service of uncovering the root cause of inequity, but her tireless, and I do mean tireless, try texting her at any time of the day. She will be available. <laughs> um, her tireless efforts also break down barriers and challenge societal norms. This, coupled with her mentorship and guidance, have shaped the careers of countless students and young professionals, instilling in them the values of compassion, integrity, principle, and excellence that she embodies. She illuminates a path for disabled students and scholars who seek a more accessible route to STEM. She works with leaders and learners to chart the most accessible pathways. And through this lens, her impact is immeasurable. For some students somewhere who never dreamed that they would graduate and go to graduate school will listen to her story and finally and finally see themselves represented in science, a scientist with a disability. Her legacy transcends her research papers and awards, and ultimately she will be measured by the lives that she has touched and the change that she has inspired. In this way, her impact extends beyond the walls of academia. Those of you who know Do Dr. Bonnie Sweener, know very well <laughs> that today is not a celebration of a life lived, but a recognition of the work she will do. She is just getting started. Her unwavering commitment to improving healthcare access and championing, I could not pronounce that word, I have been practicing for two days, I don't know what it is. Um, the rights of individuals with disabilities continues to drive her forward. And she is not alone. As Dr. Sweener reminded all of us, we all have a role to play in creating a more just and equitable world. She is merely setting a high standard for us to reach, and she's illuminating the way. Dr. Bonnie Sweener, you are one in a million, and you are ever so deserving of this professorship. Congratulations. Once again, congratulations. You're such an important member of our faculty, and I think we all now can recite what an incredible advocate you are for the nearly one-third of American adults with, who have disability and still face everyday barriers to health equity and inclusion. We can't wait to see what you will do next as endowed professorship of disability health and justice. And thanks again to the donors who joined up to give this chair. It's impossible to do without the, the generosity of the Maryland Innovation Initiative, the estates of Ms. Charlotte, Charlotte Lochner and Ralph S. O'Connor, and the living people who are Antoinette Delroel and Joshua L. Steiner. Um, I'd like to present to you with two things. Bonnie. This is, you can open that later. This is a bowl <laughs> with your name on it. And here's flowers. <laughs> Come on over here. <laughs> And we've got a lot of great food out in the hub to celebrate with Bonnie. So, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you everybody.